Welcome to Custom Home Builder Solutions, also known as CHS, a job costing, full accounting, and profit management software for the professional home builder. This video is going to be um, addressing trying to change a cost code that you've entered on a bill that might be prevented from being changed by CHS for various reasons. I'm going to go, um, let's just use the actual cost database and let's just look for the demo job that we've used quite often in our videos and let's open the database of it because let's just decide we need we want to change a cost code on something we saw um, I'm going to let's just tackle this first one and see we can see that it is um, not paid there's no paid date or check number on it yet so it's unpaid um, so that can make a difference whether it's paid or not but let's just see let's just decide we wanted a different cost code 1030 that cost code if you hovered over it I think would say that it was for warranty fees yes um, and for some reason maybe we want this to miscellaneous fees or something else so we it, we can see that it's blocked or locked right now. You can see it's kind of dim. If you do a drop down, nothing happens. But you'll see up here that it says job and cost code fields will be disabled if the bill has been approved. Well, that, that says no, it hasn't been approved yet. Or if a PO is attached, which there is a PO attached, so that's probably the reason right now it's blocked or if it's been included in a draw uh, 99 means it has not been included in a draw also if it's been included as a cost on an AR billing invoice and there's an invoice number here it will be locked um, or if the entry was created for a special purpose um, the uh, notes that are right here could give you some ideas to a special purpose like this was a retainage deduction or retainage withheld or some other deduction or some special reason this was created and probably it's an entry that matches up with another entry so we shouldn't be able to just randomly change a cost code. The reason we block it if this has been approved, which we'll talk about in a bit, is a person doing an approval for a bill to pay is basing that on the cost code that was assigned to it based on comparing it to budget or POs or other costs that have been issued and so if somebody could just easily come and change the cost code after somebody had approved it um, there could be an issue about that somebody later saying why did you approve this and say well I wasn't approving it for that cost code that kind of thing so in this video, I'm going to show you that if you just can't get the cost code changed here, that you're going to need to do an entry to take it out of the cost code and an entry to put it into the right cost code so that you have a trail. But first of all, what you might see is, well, there's a PO attached. So let's try to set this PO to none so that there's no PO attached. And I've done a previous video about showing how you set this to none, then go change the PO cost code, and then come back and change the cost code on this, and then reattach it to the purchase order that has the new, new cost code to it. <clears throat> First of all, you need to set this to none because you can't change it, the cost code on a purchase order if there's any actual cost attached. But in our case, this says the PO has been checkmarked as done. Um, based on actual costs that been, have been attached, and I can see I need to add a T in there, which would include this cost. And so you can't be changing a PO number that's been marked as done by somebody controlling purchase orders and just set this to none um, without going and unchecking this PO is done. So let's try that and see if it lets us um, make a change. And it's said to go to the purchase orders menu on the home tab by clicking this button. And to find that PO, and we happen to know that PO is cost code 1030, and the job is this to view. I don't remember what the vendor was on that. And it says to go to the POs and cost management because that's the window where you can check, mark, and uncheck POs as done. And we do need this flow in case you really are controlling things and marking POs as done. This one's marked as done because actually it had posted costs attached to it. But we'll uncheck it as done right here. 
and I know it's unchecked as done. And actually, you can use this POs and Cost Management window to go ahead and drill down on the posted costs and try to do some editing there. So let's see, there's all kinds of places, the estimated cost at completion, etc., that you might be opening. Now this is still dimmed, and that's because there's a PO attached. So let's set that PO to none, and it let us do that. So on this one, we're going to be successful. Now we can change our cost code on this, and I'm just, even though this was to a warranty person, let's just say we're trying to change it from 1030 to 1090. So that's taken care of. So let's go ahead and save this, and let's close this. And actually now there's no um, record showing because this was open just to show for cost code 1030. So let's go ahead and close this. And let's um, reset our criteria. And let's just ask for things for that Vista view. And let's just get a list. Let's go to RPOs and cost management and look at everything here. Because it's by cost code and it's easier really if you're going to do this kind of work to go ahead and open the whole thing. <laughs> so here you can see now we have 1030 um, has a PO, but the cost code is down here under 1090. So these are not lined up. You can spot that kind of thing easily, the minus and the plus, um, by reviewing this cost codes management window. So let's drill down on the PO. And let's go ahead and change the cost code on it. And we will be able to do that. Notice here by the 1030, there's a little pencil icon. If you hover over it, it says change the cost code. So we're going to change it to 1090. And then we're going to change that cost code. So this has now been changed and it's refreshing this list. Now look how we now have both the PO and the actual cost in the 1090, but we now need to get this actual cost attached up to that PO, so I'm now drilling down on the actual cost again. Notice how this window is finding all costs for 1090 with a PO number of none. Um, if we change and attach a PO number to this cost code, we'll, we'll now see that PO in the list right here. Um, and we'll select it so we get these things lined up again and we'll close that and then there won't be any records showing on this window so I have to close the message because it's only looking for actual costs that have a PO number of none. This is telling me that if I made any changes I should refresh it. On, I, the reason I do that there is because sometimes you're just reviewing things um, and you don't really need this whole thing refreshed. So I'm, I just tell you that you should refresh it. So after I refreshed it, now you can see that by PO number, there's this PO amount and posted costs of this amount, and they are all under cost code 1090. Now let's go do something else where CHS is just going to completely block you from um, changing a cost code. I actually have paused this video to go ahead and demonstrate how CHS might be completely blocking you from changing the cost code and what you'll need to post to handle that. I want to demonstrate that. So what I've done to do this is I've gone to the budgets estimates, pulled up the ECC list, clicked on the ECC worksheet, and I'm going to pretend like I'm a builder that's reviewing the overages, etc. on the ECC. Now earlier we moved everything from warranty fees to 1090, 1030 to 1090, which we really shouldn't have done. Um, and you probably would have had this posted like you did to the right one, but we just purposely went and moved all those into 1090 um, to demonstrate how to change, uh, if there's a PO attached, how to change the cost code. Now the builder is looking at this, and so let's play like that's just what happened in the first place, was that this 1,075 got posted to 1,090. By glancing at this, you can see that there's a budget for warranty fees for 1,075. You can see that this is showing over this miscellaneous and that you budgeted 400. And if you drill down on the actual costs, you can see um, that this was posted and, it, and the description was even warranty fees. 
and that this has been paid on a check now since I did that I put it to a check on purpose because I wanted to show you how to take care of that um, let's go ahead and close that if you drill down using this little pencil edit icon to attempt to try to change the cost code on here you're gonna go right here and you like it's like I said, you could be doing this from the vendor ledger or anything else. We have the same reasons for why this drop-down won't work for me to change it. Um, for one thing, I know that it is because there's a PO, but if I set this to none to try to get the PO um, off of here, I'll notice that this is still blocked. And the reason it is blocked is because this was approved out in the field to pay it's also been paid that's not why it's blocked but if like I said earlier if somebody's approved it you don't want somebody else and they did it based on the cost code which they shouldn't have actually because it was maybe in the, the wrong if they drilled down and looked at the ECC they would have caught that and maybe tried to change it before approving it but now they did approve it and a check was printed so CHS is saying no we're not just going to easily change this cost code and since it is paid, you can't go back to the list of unpaid bills and uncheck it as approved. So, And there may be a draw. It may have been included on a draw. Who knows what with that cost code. And you don't want to be just changing a cost code because the home buyer would get all weirded out if, <laughs> if they had a, a draw request that had it to this cost code and then all of a sudden everything sort of switches and moves. So, to handle this, first of all, I did get go ahead and get this unattached from the PO. And I'll save that because we don't want this, this bad one attached to a PO at all. Because what we're going to do is make some entries to take care of um, moving that. And so that you have a trail of moving that. So this is refreshing the ECC data for just a minute. What you need to do is you need to go to your post payables window and you need to go ahead and post an in and out entry. You take it out of the wrong cost code, put it into the right cost code. So I'm going to do ACES Builder Warranty. I'm going to create a job related bill. And I'm not going to select um, a PO yet for this because that PO right now has the wrong cost code. One thing you could do is go get the PO, since I've unattached the actual cost from it, you could go get the PO changed to the right cost code, but we'll do it after the fact here. So we, um, this 1030 dropped in because the vendor's default cost code is that, but we want to do an entry to our job, and we're going to be taking it out of that wrong cost code that we saw. We might have a printout in front of us or something showing that actual cost. I believe that was um, done on the 18th, the invoice, and we'll just call this invoice number reverse. And we're going to just put ACE, ACES reverse wrong cost code or something like that. And we know our amount is 75, so we'll leave, we'll put a minus amount. We won't attach any PO to this. And then what I'm going to do is copy this line. And if I had changed the PO, I could use the PO right here, but there's no PO for me to use right here. I don't want to attach it to this 1090, and this is for our other job, so I don't want to do that one. So let's just leave the PO as none right now, but let's get the right cost code in. And let's just go ahead and, I don't remember, we can drill down to see all costs that have been posted. I don't want to really see all costs. But maybe it'll be right here at the top, ACES Builder. Um, we could see that this document was this VISTA 3811-168. And I'll probably get told that it's a duplicate here in a second, but maybe not because it's a different cost code or I did it wrong, but let's just say warranty fees on this one and let's make this a positive amount so that the total this is going to be taken out of 1090 which is where it is, it's a minus 
Now we're putting it into 1030. The total is 0. And if I submit this, I happen to know what check number and what date. So I'm going to just post a payment. It's a zero amount, so this, these two entries are not going to affect my cash account. I did, it, I did the check today, as of today. That was the date of the check. And the check number was 3026, which I have in front of me, actually. And that's letting me know that's a duplicate, but that's fine. I'm going to go ahead and post as paid. Do not print check. And if I close this and close this, and I then go back to my ECC worksheet and tell it to refresh itself. Did I do something wrong? Oh, there's total POs here of 1,075, but now you can see my actual costs are up here and not here. But my PO of 1,075 is causing it to skew. So what I need to do is drill down on this PO amount. And I open the purchase order. So you can do a lot of drilling down from your ECC window and taking care of things. Since there's no actual cost attached to this one, I can change it to the 1030, change the cost code. OK. And you'll notice that there's nothing here anymore. On the uh, POs and cost management, there will be a line for 0 and 0 because we have some in and out entries for those posted costs that if you drill down on, you can see us taking it in and out of this cost code 1090 here um, so that it is 0. And you can see that the cost code here is 0. That will continue to show up because there are records taking it in and out. But if we now close this, and our ECC is being refreshed, you'll now see that this is lining up right. And uh, you know that the ECC is 1075. It's not over. And we haven't posted any actual cost to this 1090 yet, which is as it should be. But that'll show you how if somebody spots something if it's been approved, if it's been on a draw request, etc., how you should post an in and out entry to get your stuff moved. And then that way you will have a trail of what has happened. Even if you drill down on this, you're going to see the in and out entries that you did on the 1090 that caused the total actual cost to be zero. Hopefully that will help you get some cost codes changed. And um, there isn't like a whole lot of reason why you should get a wrong cost code when you're posting bills because CHS is giving you so much warning you can drill down to look at things and where what cost code you ought to be posting it to at the approval stage with that being at 1090 somebody doing the approval should have been looking at the over unders and at that time before paying the check should have sent a note or asked the bookkeeper to get that cost code changed or perhaps that job manager can get it changed if they have a high enough permission level. It's another reason why you can't change a cost code is if you have the lowest permission level, somebody a little bit higher needs to do that for you. Hopefully that helps, and thank you for watching.